Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Devil X. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walsh Live, Worldwide. That's right, you come, Lord, buddy. You're listening to Late Night, Late Night with Jerry Walsh Live, Worldwide, and the beautiful Kelly Holly, out of Charm City. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We hope you had a fantastic week, and happy Veterans Day to all of our retired and active duty soldiers. Yeah, I got a lot of family that was in the military. I was almost there, y'all. <laughs> but uh, me and my boy, we changed our mind. <laughs> the streets was too good at the time. That's right, y'all. That was the 80s. <laughs> That's when Prince and Michael Jackson blew up the world. That's right. But anyway, welcome, y'all. Welcome. And we hope everybody, um, you know, reach out and call somebody you know that has served. Well, we got a lot of wounded warriors. Um, uh, you, you know, volunteer. A lot of us don't think about it till. So Veterans Day, what can I do for those people, for those, those people who served our country, put their life on the line? That's right. You can send them goodie bags, all kinds of stuff, man. People like treats, man. You can send me a bag of chocolate. I'd be happy. So anyway, let's see what's going on in Kelly world. What's up, Kelly Holland? What's going on in your world? What's up? Hey, 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 Batman. Hey, Baltimore. How's everybody doing? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome, man. Did you get a chance to enjoy the weather today? No. No? <laughs> oh, man, you were was, you was stuck in the job all day? No recess? Uh, no re- <laughs> recess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I got out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful out. Well, you know, you know, you know, me and Mimi had to, you know, do our work. She didn't want to come in. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I had to uh, pick her up. I was about to drag her, but I didn't want people to <laughs> talk about oh my me. God. I had to pick her up, carry her in the house. She was mad with me. That's the good thing about being a little lap dog. She can get picked up. Yeah, Amen. she was mad. Yeah. I said, oh, well, I, said, we got, I got to get back on the clock, man. Can't be playing around Amen. out here. That's right. We got work to do. <laughs> Anyway, that great fall weather is wonderful. Yeah, man, we've been getting it. I mean, it's so it's so confusing. I guess what, it happens when we got these storms that's, that's coming out of the south. You know, cause I think Florida got hit again. Mm-hmm. That was crazy because I was just hearing something about it was out in the Caribbean. I guess what during the weekend, mm-hmm. and then it just slams on into Florida again, just like that. Nobody really was talking about because I guess the the elections uh, overpowered, overshadow it this time. Poor Florida. You know, <laughs> I know man. let's give a shout out to all of those victims that are experiencing these hardships during this time. Um, the weather's nice, but the kids are out of school um, because of the hurricanes and the bad weather. Um, and, you know, they just got hit with a hurricane earlier, like uh, September. Hurricane Ian. Yeah. And so it's 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 it's, it's un- so unfortunate the people of Florida are experiencing this. You know, I I almost lost my mind when I did the research on um, the victims of Hurricane Ian. Do mm. you know that Florida is increasing their homeowners insurance policies mm. by forty percent? Wow! Yeah, but well, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna, hit, they're gonna hit everybody because um I was talking to my agent and she said yeah they they about to go up. You know if you if you're not on the policy or you're trying to switch or, or, or buying a new home. Yeah, you're gonna mm-hmm. get hit. Don't don't call. If if you find out that you have something some damage to your home, then you can just pay for it yourself. Pay for it because that follows you. A lot of people didn't know that because it's attached to your no. SSN. Yeah. They listen, you can you can follow me all I need because if my whole house went up in the air like the Wizard of Oz, it's not a daggone thing I could pay for. Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, That's yeah, I'm, I'm talking about anything you can mortgage. afford. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> anything you can afford, go ahead and pay for it yourself. You know. So I'm but already. No, that uh, wasn't the big deal. No, yeah. it's like like six insurance companies claim bankruptcy, wow. and then the state said that we're going to increase your rates going forward by forty mm. percent. Meaning, I just got gypped from my house, and now you're going to increase the rate 
even mm-hmm. more whenever I finally do get on my feet. I thought that was horrific. Yeah, like, this, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that, that, the, that the rich benefits on because they just going to come on in and just buy up all them houses. And people just going to leave the houses. They not going to, you know, fight it. They just going to leave, uh, short sale it. And next thing you know, that's how the rich people, that's how they pick up so much real estate. Next thing you know, got all these B&Bs and summer homes available. That's, that's how, this, this is exactly how it happens. You know, when when, yeah. you, when you get uh when you head into a, a recession coming out of inflation. But down with capitalism. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Yeah, man, it's hard being the middle man. Mm-hmm. Hard being in the middle. It's tough. <laughs> you know? But you know, try to enjoy your life as much as you can, y'all. Don't worry about it. Give it to God. He'll take care of it. But and get out of Florida, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, it's a great place to visit, but I wouldn't want to stay. That's right. Exactly. Right. The mortgages are so cheap. I see why. Yeah, I remember we went through um, Melbourne. You know, you mm-hmm. can see the rockets take off and everything. <laughs> oh, <that's beautiful. laughs> From Cape Canard and whatever it's called. And and um a beautiful beach. But it was like a lot of vacant there was a lot of vacant properties and boats just sitting around. You know. The boats sitting up on top of houses yeah. on land. Yeah, one of my homeboys <laughs> um family had moved down there for a little while. Yeah. From 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 Charm well. City, yeah, yeah. Well, let's keep those people in prayer, and um, you know, hopefully, this they they get past this. And, and, and the problem is now we you know we we got all this stuff going on with politics. So we, people are just gonna forget all about them. You know, it's, they're gonna end up doing what happened. What, what happened with um Katrina? A lot of people just left, moved to Texas, moved to thriving states. That's what's gonna happen. You know, but. Hang in there, y'all. Hang in. There. I remember Key yeah, West yeah. used to get Key West used to get hit all the time by hurricanes, but they actually been having a break for like more than a decade. Good for them because th- that little dot 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 of an island. Um, if you look yeah, at yeah, we're at the map, bottom. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't even understand how small Key West is or how small yeah. that airstrip is where you land. <laughs> the, the pilot gotta like force yeah. that sucker down on the ground. But that used However, to be the spot though. That's the spot though. That's what I was about to say. Key West is nice. It's laid back, but if you go with some hype friends, you could turn it up, you know. Yeah. And I truly enjoyed that, you know. Um, their little clubs. It's like yeah. every 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 little spot has a time. Yeah, they got, yeah. You know. <laughs> saw that. Yeah. Saw that. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Key West was fun for me. That's right. <laughs> Florida, Gatorland. <laughs> All right. Well, look tonight. Tonight. Kelly got a special, special guest. Uh, we actually had an opportunity oh to meet gosh. meet uh, Apostle or Dr. Howard several times. We actually Dr. had her Apostle had her here in our studios. Uh, she brought a beautiful yes. mom here, and we all hung out and had a chance to hear her. Th- I never heard her tell a story like she told it here in our studio. So if you ever have an opportunity, I think we got it on YouTube somewhere. But that was that was a phenomenal story she told. She's a great storyteller anyway. Uh, she represents oh some gosh. great uh, independent artists. Uh, mm-hmm. All of them, are, all of them doing their things. I mean, you probably seen some of them at the Stylers, the Doves, everywhere. Um, she's, she, everything she touched turns to gold. And uh, of course, you know, she she rubbed elbows with, with superstars way before she even got into the music industry. She she was involved with playwrights, mm-hmm. stage plays. You know, uh, uh, Bishop Jakes, uh, Tyler Perry, all those guys. You know, before they became the names they are today, she knew those guys. So anyway. Kelly gonna get a chance to chat to her and let her tell her story, but I, I just want to say hello oh, to Lord. her real quick. Hello, Doctor Howard. Welcome to Late Night. You're awake. <laughs> oh, she ain't saying nothing yet. Doctor Howard, you on me? We on me to G. Oh, you know what? I hit the wrong button. I hit Kelly. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Doctor Howard, you hear me? You got me now. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, you asked me, "Was I awake?" <laughs> <laughs> That's bad and for you. She don't sleep. I'm gonna tell you something. I fell. Asleep. I went jogging today, and mm-hmm. I overdid it. Like I, another radio announcer challenged me to run, run after Ooh. we had jogged. So I ran real fast and jumped and acted a nut on a parking lot. Praise the God. <laughs> Amen. And so after I ate late tonight, I fell asleep. Uh-oh, sounds and I got magical Elsa powers. Car called me. Yeah, she called me. She said, oh, she was whispering. She said, it's time for your interview. I said, why on God's green earth are you whispering to me? <laughs> she said, I'm in the movie theater. Ooh. So 
I ran and put a little makeup on because I thought you could see my face. This is crazy. Oh. <laughs> no. I told you it was audio. So was, she didn't pay attention to my email. I was, I was so tired that I had been sitting on your web page waiting for you to put me in. And she <laughs> called me back. She's ready to come on TV, Kelly. You have to call the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and she's the one that she booked, and I booked the, the shows with her. Yeah, I, I was sitting on your web page, Jerry, listening, waiting for y'all to put me in. Oh man! And she called me back. I called her back, and I said, "I'm here." And she <laughs> said, "You have to call the number." <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Tara. Thank God. Pray for me. I'm here now. <laughs> no Look, I'm here too, Dr. Bear. <laughs> you, know, you know what's so funny about uh, Dr. Howard? If you go on her Facebook page, she's always uh, starting some activity, you know, on the streets of D.C., running, walking, talking to people. And, um, but, Dr. Howard, you got to be careful out there. Or you're going to be like some of those players that's 35 and older trying to play in the NFL, pulling hamstrings. You don't oh want to do gosh. that. No, no, no. I, I work out all the time. It was just that I was feeling extra amped up tonight. Uh, okay. And because we normally do four or five miles, me and Dr. Melinda. Wow. Four to five miles. Wow. And, um, and so we were feeling amped up because we just, we went a little, far, we, we just did a lot tonight. And mm. so I just said, you know what, let's go live. We went live and we started praising God. Yeah. Then, I don't know if you know Lyle Schubert, um, but I said, Apostle, I want to see you run. He meant mm. like run, run. Mm. I said, that's one thing. You don't give me a challenge. <laughs> Amen. So I started running, running. Oh, and um, so, yeah, so that's what happened. But, I, you know, I'm excited to be here with you all tonight. And I, I'm glad that uh, you guys don't have to see my face. <laughs> Yeah, no we, we know what you look like. Even, even though I put my makeup on. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you remember Dr. Whoa. Howard, but we had a, you know you and I hung up, hung out um, at the at the Spin Awards. We had, we had seats right next to each other on the front row. We was on the front row of the Spin Awards. Twenty yes, eight. Was that twenty eighteen? Twenty nineteen? Yes, I think it was twenty nineteen. I went there again this year. Um. And uh, I was there last year, I think. Yeah, yeah you were there so last I year. I definitely remember. Yeah, doing mm-hmm. COVID. Yeah, yeah, I took a break. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember. Ke- Kelly, will tell you about that. But anyway, look, I'm <laughs> I'm just here to engineer the show. I'm gonna let you ladies talk, and um, and you get a chance. Let everybody get a chance to know what you do and 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 how you um do it. Amen. Amen. All right, Batman's on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Batman. And thank you so much for joining us this evening, uh, Dr. Apostle Vero Hara. It is so great and a pleasure to have you here with us this evening. Please let our listeners know who you are and what it is that you do. I'm a Jamaican. (laughs) Because I have many jobs. (laughs) Many. I'm serious. There must be some Caribbean blood in me because I know the Caribbean, they work multiple jobs. And um, I have a company called Faith Management and Talent Casting. Mm -hmm. And we've been blessed to manage national recording artists. And Jerry, just a correction, they're not all independent. My Mm -hmm. artists are signed to major labels. Amen. We've been blessed to manage uh, film producers and do branding and marketing. And in addition to that, of course, I'm an apostle with Matthew 633 Global Ministries. I'm an actress um, as well as um, I work on films like casting. I've even been a producer before. And I write books. As well. So that's just Amen. a little bit of what I do. That's I'm just you being humble. 
<laughs> huh? I said that's just you being humble. I see this bio. It's about four pages long and it's full of info. You hear me? It's, it's full of info. Oh. These big long paragraphs, and I'm just so humbled to be here with you. <laughs> just honestly, you know, and face management and talent casting is doing big things. Big There's big so things. Much more. There's so much more. You know, I look at that bio and I give God all the credit, all the honor, all the glory. Um, But there's so much more that I have yet to do with the company. And I'm excited about the so much more. There really is so much more. And, um, And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I look at the, I look at what God has done and I get, you know, extra excited. But then I get excited of the things that he's going to do that I don't know about. You know what I mean? Like, I just get overwhelmed with the fact that he places me in situations and places that I could have never put myself. Mm -hmm. And um, he just does his thing. And so he said there's so much more. Like, I want my company to sponsor, um, you know, people who are homeless. I want to be able to put on my own tours. I want to be able, I mean, it's just so much more that um, this company is going to end up doing in the long run. Amen to that. Um, And just to name a few of the clients that she's worked with, listeners, we're talking about Titus Showers, Kiki Sheard, Kalante Gavin, David and Tamala Brown. Like, honestly, Todd Delaney, <laughs> what, what, what do we have here? Pastor Wes Morgan. These people have music on the radio right now. Shekinah Glory, J.J. Harrison, Marvin Winans Jr., C.C. Winans, Kirk Franklin, Brian Courtney Wilson, Vashawn Mitchell, the Bishop at the Potter's House, Mr. T.D. Jakes, you know, Sunday's Best, Leandria Johnson, I love her music. It goes on and on and on, and these people are active. They're making music. They're making money. And just to say, if they had not known you, they would not have this platform. That's major, and that's only well, a tiny I bit they of what you had do. The, I believe they would have had the platform because God ordained them to have the platform. It's just Amen. that God placed me in their path to be instrumental in helping them fulfill what it is that God has called them to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, I just am one of the pieces to it. Let me say the midwife, but God anointed them with the gift. You missed some of my main ones, though. You missed the one I've been with the longest. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm going to help you out. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) Pastor Dietrich Haddon. Oh, been with Dietrich for 30 albums almost. Really? And, yes, ma'am. I've been with Dietrich since he was uh, probably 22. And Dietrich is like 47. Oh. Uh, also, I have another main one who, uh, Jokia Williams. Love who, me so, uh, Jokia. She was on our show. And I love her song on um, the radio right now, Let Him In. Draw life to yeah. him, let him in. Yes, she has a distinguished yeah, was, voice. Yeah, she was trending at number one on BDS, but now that they switched to media base, she's she's almost she's getting close to number one. She's about number three or four. I also have that group you all have had before that I managed called Last Call from Bermuda. They yeah. were number one with a song called Victory, and now they have a new single out called I Win. Mm. I'm also, I also managed Sunday Best Singer that did Millions Didn't Make It. I was one of the ones who did Ashford Saunders. Really? I represent um, him as well. Mm. Um, so I've been blessed to work with a host of folks. Yes, you have been. And that's not even a tip of it, y'all. We, we talking about Tyler Perry, we talking about <laughs> playwrights. This that we just talked about the music. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the other hats that you wear. And so it was comical when you started off and, and let our viewers listeners know what it is that you do. You said, I'm a Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't keep up. I cannot keep up. So to all of you listeners tuning in, if 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 Dr. Apostle Vero Howard can get it done, that should be an inspiration to you all to stop your worry and stop your complaints and to get up and get something done. Amen. Girl, get up and win. Okay, so that, we we have all of these 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 accolades here. Um and you're proving your footsteps, your footprint has been proven in this world of entertainment. Um not just with music, but also in plays, television, movies. I'm 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 just honored to be here in your presence to be honest with you. The people that you've worked with is are prominent. Um they're familiar and you're not done. No, ma'am. Hey. I'm just open to whatever God wants to do, where he wants to do it and how he wants to do it. And I know that there's so many more I must reach. Um the Lord told me I am not called to just the four walls. I am mm-hmm. called to the marketplace. So with that being said, there are so many people that are out there in the marketplace that, um, you know, I have to reach. Mm-hmm. And I'm just open and willing and available because like with the film business right now, I'm presently in a movie on BET. And um, it's a Christmas movie called The Wesley Wesley Christmas Story. And we're streaming now on BT Plus, Amazon Prime, but we are the Thanksgiving Christmas movie. So we kick off on Thanksgiving Day on all of BET stations. Mm -hmm. And so on that movie when we were on set, I actually played Pastor Timmons. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I played Pastor Timmons, and the interesting thing about it, how I got the role, Mm -hmm. just to tell you how God, you know, he knows what he's doing, the writer slash executive producer called me up, and there was another role she wanted for me, which was a lead role. She said, "Um, oh, somebody's asking me, how do I join? What do I tell them? Because I want them to join. They can always dial in. That's how they can get to hear us live. Um, they can always go to Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, type in Jerry Royce Live, and they can listen in on us right now. Um, or they can wait till after the show, and then we'll be available on all media platforms. No, they want to come in live in case they have a question. Oh, um, amen. Yeah. Yeah, they want to come in live. Um, I'm gonna tell them go to my page and dial in. Mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. Amen to that. But they don't make. They have made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start off with a fresh question. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just curious. How did all of this come about, um, Dr. Howard? How How did you even get yourself? so deeply rooted into this entertainment realm. I mean, we're talking about TV, film, plays, music. There's no end to it. How how did all of that happen? Faith management and talent casting. Oh, Lord, we might not have enough time for that. Amen. Um, well, I try to, you know, tell people the story. Uh, I'll try to make it short. Okay. I was born crippled. And so being that I was born crippled, the doctors told my mom that after they broke my legs out that they needed to put me in various things to make me walk normal. So if you Mm -hmm. see me in person, I'm a little pigeon-toed. So I did things like dance. I did tap dance, a ballet dancer, Hawaii Mm -hmm. dancer, you name it. And also I rode horses. I did karate. I did Mm -hmm. fashion shows. I did beauty pageants. I did all that stuff to try to be like a normal human being. And I had a tenacity for the entertainment arena. I used to want to act when I was a little girl. I was always very animated. I'm glad my mom didn't call me ADHD, but she told me I was very (laughs) hyper. (laughs) Always very hyper. Get bored really quick. Always Mm -hmm. inquisitive. I was a very inquisitive child. And, but my parents, 
were very, very educated. So they made me do all the schooling. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to undergrad, went to grad, went to medical school. I mean, I just did every bit of education you could do. And so, um, but eventually it came back around to entertainment. Mm-hmm. And so when it came back around to entertainment, it started from the modeling thing because I would audition for videos and you know, and then I got tired of auditioning for videos and not being the one to pick the people for the videos. I said, no, I'm a boss lady. I, I'm not going to stand in line for people to pick me. So I started my <laughs> casting company. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so then from there, I started working with plays. And so when I started working with the plays, I, I started becoming like a little acting coach doing branding and marketing promotions and casting. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was behind the scenes. And so then, because that's when I worked with Tyler Perry, David Talbert, Emmanuel Siegels, Andrew Barrow. I've worked on so many plays. So so then prior to the plays, I was working with the film producers I work with now. They were 18 and 19. They are the executive producers of the number one hit show on All Black TV Network called Double Cross. Mm. And so I was working with them at that time because I always had a knack for picking talent, and I was very animated myself. And so I was working with them as their manager and also doing script continuity stuff. And um, so then, in casting. And so then I was beginning to make my little way in this little industry, so I thought I was going to be the next big thing on casting. Mm-hmm. And in the midst of all of that, God told me to give up television and film. Give it up. Give it up. And do what? I said, God, are you serious? Mm. Because I had gotten saved. And I was like, are you serious? It can't be serious. And he said, yeah, give it up. He said, and I'll bring you back in it when I'm ready. He said, I'll bring you back in it after you go do what I tell you to do. And so I left it. And I went into straight music and representing national recording artists as a result of running into an artist who was in a play. And then he said, you ever think of management? I said, absolutely not. That ain't my thing. Mm-hmm. And then, then he came back to me, and if you ever want to get to me, you have to say, did you pray about it? You know, they always say to me, did you pray about it? Because by this time I got saved. And so I said, listen, I can't manage you because, you know, we make percentages. It's not an ongoing salary. See what this record company he said. I want her to be my manager. And with Sony Records, he said, can you hire her to do branding and marketing and everything else while she manages me? The record company hired me. And so I started managing him and doing branding and marketing with his record. And um, that was Michael Speaks did a song, Jesus is Real. Mm. And, and so then from there, Type got records, hired me. They're the oldest African American record company that's out there. This is how I met Dietrich. Mm-hmm. I, I got records. Well, even before that, there was a, a friend of mine. She's deceased now. When I used to do marketing with the plays, we would hire her to go do street marketing with me, street teams, meet with the ministers and all that other stuff, the radio announcers. And she said, you know what? There's a guy who's brand new on the scene. He's different. He's weird. He's before his time. I think y'all are a perfect match. His name is Dietrich Haddon. She said it to me. And I didn't know who Dietrich was because he was just beginning. Mm-hmm. And so I got hired with his record company to do his tour, to to root his tour, market his tour. That was in 1998, Ty Scott Records hired me. Amen. And so from there, Dietrich kept me on. And then other artists wanted to work with me, and then it just went on from from starting out with Michael Speaks to Dietrich to Ty Scott to Sony Records, and then it just went on and on and on, and then I became a manager, and that's how that's what happened. Amen to that. God put you in position, honey, and you listened. Being obedient to God, do you find that to be difficult within your life, or have you done it so long that it's second nature? It's second nature, but it still always challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I just got to keep it real because the assignments, as the assignments become more difficult, God expects more from you. 
Mm. And, um, you know, being that he expects more from you, um, you know, you got to give him more. He mm-hmm. puts more responsibility. It, it, it requires an increase in your prayer life. It, you know, just certain things like that. So, um, and then, you know, I can't move without hearing from him. I can't move without having a relationship. I can't move without knowing what my next is. I can't mm-hmm. move. I mean, that's just a reality. So, um, so yeah, it's always challenges as you go up this ladder. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So, um, being obedient in that. And then as God gives you more responsibility, can he trust you with it is the question. You know, about that. And, <laughs> yeah, can he even trust you? And that's another thing. You know, some people can't do it because they'll get the big head. <laughs> I'm just saying. They do. <laughs> but it's a nice little cute way that you say it, but I get it. You know, people get so consumed with their with their role that they consider themselves more important than necessary. And so we get the big head. We get arrogant. Um we think we did all this journeying on our own, you know, <laughs> like we wasn't praying to God to make it all happen. I definitely understand. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I asked God, I said, please don't ever let me get the big head. Please mm-hmm. keep me focused, you know, please allow me to stay humble and and always acknowledge that. He is the reason that Mm -hmm. I'm even successful. And I just, I'm very cognizant of knowing that I would not be able to do any of this if it wasn't for the strength of the Lord. Not Earl Howard, but God. And so I don't get it twisted. And that's what keeps me level-headed and grounded is because I know that I would not be able to do any of this. If it was not for God. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Um, Just real quick, can you touch on how you came in contact with Tyler Perry? Oh, wow. Um, A long, long, long time ago, before Mm -hmm. he became who he is right now. Um. He was trying to get his stuff picked up in the play business. And the company I worked for at that time, um, they financed plays. And so uh, there was a gentleman that believed in him named Arthur Primus out of uh, um, Dallas, Texas. He believed in him. He's a fine, and that gentleman, um, was a um well he is not was mm-hmm. he's one of those people that you go to when you want something you know like funded mm-hmm. and so he believed in Tyler and so what he did was he um he took Tyler to other promoters around the world to say listen I believe in this guy buy in it you know book his play Mm -hmm. in your city come on in financially help me fund this tour because i think we're on to something with tyler Mm -hmm. and so i just happened to be the girl that worked in the office that did the branding and marketing and this that and the other okay so so when they came to the office for us to finance him they they financed him and so that meant that i was responsible for doing his advanced marketing, his promotion, his publicity, and, um, you know, meeting with people in different cities. I was the person that would fly into a city before the play got there, Mm -hmm. meet with the radio, the TV, the ministerial alliances, the sororities, the barber shops, the busy shops. I met with everybody, set up their Mm -hmm. interviews. And I would meet with the street teams in the market, give them the flyers, tell them how we needed to promote. And then about time I set everything up with their interviews and all of that, then the the cast might fly in, and as soon as I fly, they fly in for the beginning of that week, I might be there one night, and I fly out and go to the next city. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did with several 
of the play producers, even David Tabler, who is now a film producer. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, the movie that I'm on right now. Um, she said right now, y'all. <laughs> Without the big head. <laughs> yes, the movie that I'm on right now, those producers, I actually, I actually met um, one of them. He was the stage manager for David Talbot's plays, and I was doing David Talbot's publicity and helping, you know, with talent. And this was 25 years ago. And so mm. now a lot of them that started out with me with the play business are film producers. And so being that we worked together years, years ago, they have now that the Lord brought me back into the fold because remember I told you that God told me to leave it. Mm-hmm. They're hiring me. And I say to God, be the glory. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. You are such a blessed person, and to know you is to have a hand in the mix. Um, how is it that you deal with, well, what type of advice would you provide to young black girls that don't know how to get in, that don't know how to get to their goals, but they have an ambition? Somebody said that the interview is just plain music. I guess mm-hmm. she's on now. Um, well, it's interesting you would say that because mm-hmm. I just found out last night, and I haven't told anybody, um, I just found out that um, I am being honored December in December as something like Woman of the Year in Jacksonville, Florida Amen. for being exemplatory of how a woman of God should act. Mm. And I asked, and the person who's honoring me is a film director, because I'm actually shooting a role with him also in something he has, a film he has. And um, because I asked him, I said, how did I get picked? He said, because, you know, we watch you, we see what you do, and you present yourself as a woman of God. You don't waver, Mm -hmm. and you don't sell out. You're not sleeping around. You're not you're not taking your standards down. You know, you're you're presenting yourself as a godly woman and a lot of these young girls need to know that. They need to know how to be a godly woman. They need to know how to value themselves. They need to know that there's a call on their life. They need to know that God thinks more of them than what they think God thinks of them. They need to know that God has a purpose for their lives. They need to know that they don't have to do certain things to be successful. And um, and I believe that God is wants to use me in this hour to get that point across. And he reiterated it when he said to me, you're getting an award from as woman of the year because of your disposition in the industry. I don't have a bad rep doing anything um, ungodly in the Amen. industry. I don't have a rep for being a slut. I don't have a rep for sleeping around and getting ahead. I don't have a rep for, um, you know, beating down people or manipulating situations or um, doing things that just are unintegral. So he said that other young ladies need to learn that. And when I look at these ladies today, because I watch, when I'm on my Facebook page, a lot of IG stuff pops up. Mm -hmm. And I kind of watch some of this stuff. And some of this stuff, you know, you will wonder, why is an apostle watching this? But I am appalled of where women are today. Really? Especially our African-American women. Their ancestors would roll over in their graves because they worked so hard for us to be dignified, for us to have certain rights, for us Mm -hmm. to be classy, for us to be treated as citizens and not animals, for us to be uh, able to have jobs, go to college, Mm -hmm. you know, for us to represent our culture correctly, 
you know, and when I see some of this stuff, I see I am just appalled. You're right. You're absolutely right. And it's unfortunately there's two sides to media. And um there's one side that's heavily promoted and influenced. I mean, and they dig in deep, the powers that be. They they hit you with your TV. They hit you with the media. They hit you everywhere where your um, attention goes. And so people start to assume these uh, mannerisms that's not really reality, you know. And um, I can definitely understand your point of view um, when you're looking at the race. Um, there's a lot of positive out there. Let's not pretend there is it. However, there's um, enough of the foolishness um, where one would think that this is um, unfortunately a way of life when it's not. And so um, I also like to encourage others to travel um, outside of the United States um, just so they can get an idea of how the world runs and not just be isolated to the way that we do things um, in America. Yeah. I'm a big uh, advocate of international work. I just came back from Bahamas, and I'm literally working on some projects right now mm -hmm. to get um, an incentive program developed for um, uh, film directors to go to various countries and shoot films. And so I'm talking to countries now about mm -hmm. that. And um, in a lot of the foreign land, they have such integrity. You know, they don't, they're not, a, they're, they don't have things accessible to them like we do. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't take things for granted. And I think that uh, we do sometimes, you know, we really do. And they're behind us with some of our lifestyle activities that is over the top to me. Um, and I don't say that it doesn't happen there, but they're behind us. I mean, when you're talking about an island that may be 30 some square miles or an island that may be 21 like Bermuda, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's still taboo. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a certain realm of respect that they have for each other and themselves and just certain things they wouldn't do. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes they don't come to America and act like a fool either, mm -hmm. but but I'm just saying, on, you know, I have found out when I go to a lot of countries um, outside of our own country, people are grateful to have, and they're grateful to be in positions of having, and so they have a tendency to be a little bit more respectful with themselves. Absolutely. I can understand. Um, <laughs> without me going into a tangent, I'm just going to agree. And so <laughs> I'm just going to agree because you're absolutely right. Um we're 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 over our time, but I just I don't feel like I even tapped into the tip of the iceberg um, on this interview this evening, and I would certainly love to have you back if you have the time one day in your schedule, um, so we could talk more about your ministerial life, um, how you even got into being a pastor, how are you able to manage your um, your duties of the church while you're still managing all this talent and achieving your own direct goals. And so I just thank you for being here this evening. Um, I apologize that we couldn't get deeper into um, our interview today. Um, I don't think it's enough for one show. I think we need to block out some time when we invite you on to our show so that uh, our listeners can definitely um, uh, uh, consume the greatness that you pour out and be inspired um, just by the work you have done. Um, so thank you again for joining us this evening, Dr. Howard. We appreciate you and all that you do. Um, and just not to be completely remiss, would you mind praying us out this evening? No, I, I don't mind, but I want to tell you what I forgot. Go ahead. When I had that moment of a senior citizen, <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I got this, when I was texting, mm -hmm. I remember that the executive producer slash writer of the 
Wesley Christmas movie that I'm in on BET now called me and offered me a lead role. And when she offered mm-hmm. me the lead role, I couldn't play the lead role because the lead one of the one of the lead roles, the lady trained. I says just a few little cuss words, but it's a reason why. She went through something traumatic. And so she said to me, you know what? We need a pastor, a male pastor, age 33. And I'm not a male, and I'm not 33. Mm-hmm. And she said, but girl power, I believe you could do it. She sent me the script. I put my robe on, and I practiced with my Aunt Audrey. She said, hurry up and get me the video back. I mean, I had I had no time to get it done. And I sent it back to her, and she sent it to the whole, the whole casting crew. Mm-hmm. And she called me back screaming, you got the role. And I say all that to say, I want to leave that with your people, when... God has told you he's going to do something through you, for you, with you. You have to be ready. I didn't have time to try to figure it out. I didn't have time to try to say, okay, can I get back to you two weeks later? I didn't. I had to be in position. And somebody who gave me a chance like that, you know, of beating the odds, I had to give it my best shot, and I had to believe that God had already told me I was back in that season to to act because remember I told you I gave it all up. You did. Yes. Yeah, so I just want to encourage somebody who, you know, you never know when that thing you've been waiting for it looks like it's past the clock hour is gonna come back your way and you'll be able to walk in the manifestation of the promise of the dream that God has given you. But you got to be ready because you don't know the moment. You don't know the second, the day, the hour. You have always got to be in prep mode. So don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't think it can't happen to you. Don't think that God forgot about you. Don't listen to those who try to discourage you or say you can never do it, that you're too old. Because I'm not no young chick out here acting and modeling and fashion week and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. So... I want to encourage you with that because she believed enough of me and she said, girl, power, come on, girl, bring that script. I read that thing like I ain't never read it before. Amen. Now I'm on BET. So I hope that was a word of encouragement to somebody. But I'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We are so grateful just to be alive. We are grateful Amen. that you selected us to exist, God, with a purpose, Father God. We're grateful because there are many that have gone on to be with you. Many have closed their eyes, God, and many you have called home. Some prematurely have left because of the attacks of the enemy and the works of the enemy. But, God, we are grateful that you have put a hedge of protection around us. God, you have still put a word inside our lips to be able to share about your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your miraculous hand, your power, and who you are as our Lord and Savior. God, we thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You make all the decisions, God. Even the enemy cannot touch us without coming to you like he did Job and saying, can I touch your servant? Mm -hmm. So, God, I thank you that you order our steps. You create the plan. You are the master plan. You know the way. You open the doors. You dispatch the angels. You move the enemy out of the way. God, you cut down mountains, God. You keep seeds from from allowing them to cause us to drown, Father God. You have us overcome hurdles and hurricanes and storms and obstacles that would be thrown our way, all the letdowns, God. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for every boulder that has been thrown at us that tried to stop us, every spirit of distraction, every hindrance that tried to say we couldn't do it because, God, you said that we could do it. And, God, I thank you because you have given us endurance and made us steadfast. You rose us up, God, like an Mm -hmm. eagle that you have called us to be, Father God. So, God, we should not get weary in our well-doing, but we should continue to soar and press 
into you, Father God. Press into more your glory, your might, your power, your word, your strength, the anointing, God, that you share with us, God, the oil that you pour out on us from a heavenly place, Father God. We will continue to trust in you. So, God, for every listener who's on here today, God, I pray, God, that whatever's inside of them, whatever gifts, whatever wisdom, knowledge, whatever, God, you have called them to do, God, and it's in their belly, God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that, God, that their bellies will be ignited to move forth regardless of what someone has said to them, God. And, God, they know that they can thrust with you. They can rely on you. They can trust you and that you have the answer. You are Jehovah Jireh, the provider, so they can't even question not having money, God, because you are a miracle worker. So I pray, God, that that listener is blessed and that Mm -hmm. listener will continue to strive on and do what you have called them to do despite the enemy's hand and the wickedness that we wrestle against, God, that you Mm -hmm. said is not flesh and blood, God. I pray that the listener, God, will put on the spiritual eye and recognize, Father God, when danger and harm tries to come, God, and that, God, you said in your word, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yes, but, God, God that we would not give up in spite of what seems like a rocky road or a rough road or tough terrain or a journey that looks like it never has an end to the greatness. God, the devil is a liar, and we know yes. that. Mm-hmm. We decree it, and we declare it, and we thank you, God, yes. that you are Elohim, all-knowing, all-seeing, the great and mighty God, Lord Adonai, Jehovah Nisi that fights our banner, Yahweh God, Jehovah yes, Rapha that heals our body, God. God, you are the God above all gods, the Lord above all lords, the King of kings, the great and mighty God, the great I am that I am. And mm. so for that, God, we're grateful and we admonish you tonight and we give you all the praise and Glory, God, because we don't question your finish in, but we will allow our steps to be ordered by you as your word says the steps of a good man are, my God, ordained by you. And I hear that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. So, God, I pray for happiness among your people and your grace, your mercy, God, and peace that passes all understanding. So, Lord, have your way with us. Have your way with this network, God. Continue to bless, continue to pour out what they need, open the portals of success to them, Father God. Continue to give Jerry the vision, God, the insight, the knowledge, God, to expand and do what you call him to do with the airwaves, whether it be television or radio, God. And so tonight, we will not forget to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for all our success, because it does not come from us alone. We're only your vehicle and vessel to win souls over to the kingdom of God. So, God, let us be mindful to win those souls over and to be about discipleship. So we thank thank you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory, and it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Yes, Lord. I bet then you better not cut me off early. I was, <laughs> we go, we gonna spend every minute I can. <laughs> I ain't gonna cut you. I was, I was gonna just say I told you she was a prayer warrior. I'm gonna tell you real quick. Yeah. Dr. Howard, she's not just a, a spiritual woman and a with a big heart, but she's a very funny person too. <laughs> she made me laugh all the time. <laughs> she's very funny clean funny too man that's the thing yeah she she should she should be on tv on a sitcom you know kind of like that that show with those kids uh elementary what's that, what's that show called um my wife watches it all the time elementary called abbott or something like that with the principal oh and the gosh. teachers and the kids she'd be good on that show Oh, yeah, you okay? What up? But anyway, you know, any show, honey. yeah, she's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations, Thank though, about about a Wesley Christmas. She's starring with Jasmine Howard. I mean, Jasmine Guy and Dorian Wilson Jasmine from the Parkers. Guy. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. Who's it? I mean, Jasmine Guy, right from a uh, different Jasmine world. Guy, Dorian Wilson. Yeah. Yes, Dorian Wilson. You know, yes. he's from the Mr. Parker. Yeah. C.C. Carter. You remember in Living Single, and he yes. was um, Obi's roommate. 
Oh, oh yes. Oh, I see him. He has all that gray on him now. Oh. <laughs> yes. You, you see yeah, his we do, you, we do grow up. You know what I mean? How about and, that? <laughs> Ray Gray and it's been, in the movie. Okay. I love comedians. <laughs> yes. It's a, in a role. Um, uh, Rolanda, she's in it. She's an IG sensation. People know her from doing stuff with Country Wayne. Um, mm-hmm. It's like an all-star cast. The yeah. cast is just so wonderful. And, I mean, they were just a blessing to work with. And also, I didn't say, I just got back from the Peachtree Film Festival, and the movie Double Cars was voted as number one of all TV shows, period, at wow. the Peachtree yeah. Film wow. Festival. So, um, them get some films, them Crystal Gibson's and Howard right. Gibson, they're doing, yeah, they're doing their thing. We're in our... We just shot our we shot our fourth season, so it airs February the third, and we're getting ready to uh, start shooting our fifth season. We pretty much been green lit um, mm. for a couple more years, and I just bless God because both of those um, well, one is a TV series and one's a movie. Both of them, I've been written in for a couple more seasons. I'm a regular now, so oh, wow. yeah. God is you. up to something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's up to something. Yeah, and, I see it um, too. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I saw that back in 2018 when you were sitting next to me at the Spinner West. Well, she's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Somebody just told me, Jerry, this is no lie. The man who is over, who's the founder of the Peace Tree um, Village Film Festival, just told me yesterday. Mm-hmm. He said, You need your own show. You need your own show. I mean, he just said that to me. <laughs> And we were cracking up because I had him falling out laughing <laughs> in the car. And he was like, you know, I just, and like today when I was um, hanging out with Dr. Melinda, I was cutting up on the in the parking lot, dancing, <laughs> shouting, jumping up and down, doing go-go music, you know, oh, that's go-go. Great. Yeah, that's and, right, in D.C. Um, Laughter is good for the soul, and yeah, I, you know, so I like to make people laugh, and I like to laugh. So you're Me right, but, but you know, Kelly, she that kind of funny where you know people they don't even really have to try. Yeah, <laughs> she just be, I just remember she was messing around with her phone trying to get it charged up, and she was tripping me out. She just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> did I ever thing. get a charge? You was tra- you, yeah, you did went on the side of the stage. Yeah, you did. You went on the side of the stage and charged it up. <laughs> you were sitting I in the front row. Right. She was sitting in the front <laughs> row and just got up. <laughs> 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 well, it was a live performance. <laughs> well, that's like the night I was sitting on your page thinking that I was about to go on, you know, Zoom or something, waiting for y'all to come on, and then I didn't realize. That you, I'm supposed to call in. Man, you booked so many people <laughs> on my show. <laughs> like how you forget? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was the nap, honey. It was the nap. Yeah. Yeah, it can't mess you up. Yeah. It did, because I, I got this bright pink lipstick. I said, Lord, I got to fix myself up. I put a scarf around my head so my hair could be flat. Okay. And I just was sitting there, and I said, something ain't right, because... <laughs> I hear them talking and they don't see me to let me in the studio. <laughs> I mean, right. So I told them a hundred times. I separate. I separate Zoom from uh, Facebook Live from TV. See, it's all the same to me. So I separate oh it. Yeah, I separate radio from um, from that stuff. Yeah. Oh hey, my god! You can't call yeah. our. Uh, you can't call our TV. Our TV show no podcast. <laughs> like most people. Wow. Right, Kelly. Wow. Amen. Thank the Lord for these different platforms. Okay, we got we have the podcast, we have the TV shows. We Jerry got contracts around, and but I think he need to name drop a little bit. I don't know. Come on, <laughs> we got Doctor Howard here now. Jerry, right. you Dr. smoke Howard. too. <laughs> Dr. DMV, DMV. You know, you know, it's a funny thing. I've been chasing at the uh, Doctor Howard to get my my boy Charles uh, D. Clock on one of her uh, shows. He been trying so hard. He been trying to cast. Man, he right up there too in uh, Woodbridge, so he can do it in person. Yeah. Oh, I don't know who that is. Yeah, I thought he been trying to reach out to, you, but he's working on a big movie. Yeah, he working on a big Amazon Prime movie now, so he probably just moved on <laughs> from us. From us, uh, yeah, big time. But just show you the DMV is doing. Um, DMV doing incredible things. 
in this area. So, um, yeah, the directors here, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, Octet Production and Dem Gibson Films. Yep. And there's another one I work with, another company. Um, they're right, they're located here. There's a lot of film directors here, but what is happening is the DMV does not offer the tax incentives as Atlanta and other states. I believe so. <laughs> we reach a certain cap. You know, yeah, so when we reach a certain cap, you know, we run out of money. So a lot of times the directors have to shoot in places like Atlanta where you, mm-hmm. can, you can get 30 40% of your money back in other locations. So it kind of is more attractive for us to go elsewhere. And the DMV directors want to make this more of a, a territory for for film and television. Yeah. You know, they want mm-hmm. it to build and they're working very closely with the mayors in Maryland, the mayor in DC to try to get the film commissioners to really get the vision and help make more money available because there's so many art creatives here, yeah, you true. know, in this area. And we don't want to lose them. We don't want to lose them to LA. We don't want to lose them to Atlanta. We don't want to lose them to these places where you get these tax credits. Yep. And so, um, directors are working very hard. And then the other thing, they're very loyal to hiring people. Like we shot Double Cross in L.A. Hmm. And but the, most of their production team, like 17, 18 members of their production team were flown to L.A. from D.C. and Maryland. Oh, wow. And then they casted a lot of people from the DMV. But we shot in L.A. Hmm. And, um, and then the other company, Octet, you know, they open up their doors for a lot of people right here in the city when they do the casting calls or things like that. And because these are straight up homegrown people who God is blessing in the film and television area. So they're trying to allow opportunities to open up for people that are in our own neighborhood. Yeah. They need you to know? come on the Eastern so, Shore too. You know, they got a lot of territory and, you know, space, <laughs> you know, to do stuff, <laughs> car, to do car chases and stuff. Really? Yeah. Territory and space? I don't know what you mean. I said Eastern About Shore. The Eastern Shore, Maryland. I said you guys got to come down to Eastern Shore. There's a lot of space down there to do, um, like, stunts. Like, incredible stunts. Oh! Oh! Duh! Yeah, like farms. They got it. farms and all that stuff. You know, in case you want to do oh, a well, slave movie. Like that, yeah, I can bring that to their attention. Because we always do locational sites. Mm-hmm. Um, I work on a, there's a film that's coming out called Hush and, um, I wasn't in that film, but I worked on locations. I, like, for example, there was another film that came out last year on BBC called Remy Ma. I wasn't in that, but I worked with helping with the extraordinary cars and sending people their way. Mm-hmm. So I work in various capacities. So when it comes to locations, I will let them know you know, that there's a lot of territory out there. Because we have a tendency to stay in the DMV because of the incentives that Mm -hmm. we get for shooting. And and it's really about those incentives. That's why I said earlier I'm meeting with various countries now to have incentive programs um, built up Mm -hmm. so they can be excited, so directors can be excited about going into other countries because it's so expensive. Yeah, you know, but we need something. We need some help. Help with the Minister of Tourism. We need help with hotels. Help with some flights. Help. Yeah. You, well, know, you can so come to Baltimore, too. Come to Baltimore. We, you know, remember, remember they did the wire here. We got plenty of um, vacant homes for blowing up stuff, too. <laughs> you blow, blow it up. Really blow it up. <laughs> There's a lot of movies that are shot in Baltimore, though. Like, uh-huh. even right now, if I'm talking to you, I just got... Uh, somebody's casting right now in the DMV, a casting call. Uh, All That Glitters Is Not Gold is mm-hmm. casting with Nubia Filmworks. Nubia Filmworks has been shooting films for a while. The casting call is Sunday, November the 19th, 10 a.m. Location, 6525 Beck Press Road, suite number 619 Hyattsville, Maryland. Oh, okay. Wow. And they're casting. They have a list of casting roles. There's quite a few of them on here. You uh, said called Nubian, Nubian casting. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a lot. I could send it to you. It yeah. says this is SAG after production. Um, yeah, shoe app. They need a Latino woman. 
Um, yeah, they got the age range, all of that. Yeah, please White send. male, age 45 to 65. So there's a lot of stuff that is, you know, going on. They need a poetry reader male, age 26 to 35. African-American woman, love, interest, and friends, supporting roles. Yeah, they do have a lot of openings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have to get that bit. out there to our, our friends out there in the DMV, the, the actors and actresses. All right. I'm going to send it to you right now, Jerry, so you'll right. have it. And yeah. if they are serious about their craft, they'll go. Please do. All right. Well, look, it's time for us to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, listeners. Well, not a problem. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you, Dr. Howard, for being here this day, and I hope that we can uh, have you back on the show. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in. Please join us every Thursday night from 10 to 11 for Late Night with Jerry Royce Live with Kelly Holland. And never forget to tap back into your unspeakable joy. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. Positive power, 24 Internet Radio. You are listening to Jerry Wars Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Popular the Generous, gospel artist from Lagos, Nigeria, Africa. And you're listening.